So far you've learned how to move around your computer, how to create files, do a bunch of really cool things, but nothing around editing or running your files yet. So this lecture is going to be specifically focused on teaching you how to modify your files. We're going to do it a little bit in the terminal, and then we're going to explain how to use an ID to do this, which is most likely what you're going to end up working with. I realize we are throwing a lot of jargon here at you. So what is an IDE? IDE stands for Interactive Developer Environment. So let's go to our developer folder. So CD, developer, forward slash open source. And let's go into the course folder as well, CD course. So you see our main.py right now, there should be nothing in there. So cats, the file, so cat main.py, you're gonna see that there's nothing in there. Let's go ahead and edit this file. And I'm going to just type the words open main.py. And when I do that, it's going to open something. For you, I don't know what's going to open. It really depends on how you've configured your computer. It might even open like a text editor if you don't have an ID. For me, I've configured it to use VS Code, which is another IDE, and it's going to just let me edit the file. So in that main.py, I'm going to go ahead and just type print hello world, and this is going to be a very simple Python program, and I'm going to save, that's it. Now, if you go back to your terminal, and I cut out main.py, you're going to see that I now have print hello world. To run this Python file, I'm going to say Python, meaning I want to use the programming language Python to run the file. And then the first argument is going to be the file name itself, which is main.py. Then I press enter, and I should see the words hello world. This is a very simple file and this is not really representative of anything you're going to do in the real world. So let's go ahead and do a real life editing. I personally use PyCharm for coding. Again, difference of opinions. Everyone has a favorite ID. Some people use Vim, some people use Emacs, some people use whatever. I use PyCharm. I also happen to use Vim mode in PyCharm because I like shortcuts, but that's really up to you and whatever you want to do. I don't want to start a debate. I guess you can debate in the comments if you want, but it's going to be a very hotly debated topic. To install PyCharm, you just go ahead and go to Google. I'm just going to go ahead and search for it in my computer, and it's PyCharm here, and I'm actually going to close my terminal as well. Sometimes you keep your terminal open on the side, but the IDs tend to have an embedded terminal in there as well. Now that your PyCharm is open, you're going to see this menu where you have three options. Create a new project, open, or get from version control. I usually just open, so I click open, go find the folder that you want, and I'm going to go to developer. I'm going to go to open source, the course that we created, and I want to open that folder. Press open. Now on the left, you're going to be able to see the folder structure of your projects. And there's the file called main.py that I'm going to be able to double click into. And now you see my hello world. So every time you open one of these IDEs and you open a project, you also have to select what environment you're going to use. The way that you can do that in PyCharm is I can click down here, bottom right, you can select the project interpreter. And I can see that I have a few environments ready. And in fact, I guess I already have course two as the environment selected, so I am in Jupyter right now. But you notice that I don't have course one, Mars. So how do I find it? If PyCharm didn't show it to you, how would you do that? So I can go ahead and click on add interpreter, and then I'm going to click on existing environments, and then I'm gonna click on this drop down, and hopefully it shows up. In this case it doesn't, and that's just what happens sometimes. So I'm gonna click on these three points. It's gonna open it to where these environments are. So Miniconda 3 environments, and then I'm just going to find course one. Course one is where you can find the actual environment. So I go to the binary folder, bin, and then I'm just gonna scroll down to Python 3.7, which is the Python that's in this environment. Any of these will do. 
just the Python 3.7. I click OK. And then now it's going to recognize that environment and then going to press OK. And now you see that my environment has changed to course one. So the code that's going to run on this IDE now is running on Mars, not on Earth. And as you can see, there are many tools out there in the world and the open source community is well, very well aware of that and also makes sure everything is tightly integrated. So you can see this was an example of how well these tools work all together. When you add a new environment, what's going to happen often is that the ID has to index that new environment to tell you what packages are on there. So remember, in Mars, I had PyTorch Lightning. So if I go to the top of this file and I say import PyTorch Lightning SPO, the ID recognizes that it's available. If I were to switch environments back into something that didn't have PyTorch Lightning, which all my environments do, I guess, <laughs> And then it would show that I don't actually have PyTorch Lightning in that environment. In this incredibly uh, charming lesson, we learned about PyCharm, but of course there are also other tools out there. For me personally, I prefer VS Code, which stands for Visual Studio Code. It's an extremely lightweight um, yeah, editor, which is incredibly fast, um, and it also allows you to power charge it with different plugins. So my preference is uh, Visual Studio Code, but also PyCharm is an incredibly powerful tool. Try all these different tools, see what uh, fits your workflow, and yeah, don't hesitate to uh, reach out to us if you have any questions about these tools. We are very happy to chat more.